So big in the news right now is the uh, Alec Baldwin shooting, the accidental shooting of his uh, cinematographer and director. And the cinematographer, sadly, has died. And uh, apparently she was really talented and had a lot of uh, good projects coming up. And so that's a tragedy. And I don't want to talk a lot about uh, the, the specifics of it, because as usual, as I record this, it just happened a few days ago. So all of the facts about it are just kind of flying fast and loose and yeah, who knows what it's going to settle down to, to be. But I am going to speculate as speculation. I'm going to, you know, let you know that this is speculation because, I mean, keep in mind, everyone is innocent until proven guilty. And we really need to be sure when something like this happens, we don't go ahead and choose up sides and plant our boots in the ground. And we, we just, uh, we, we make sure we can adapt with the, uh, the changing fact patterns as they come up. And one thing I really don't envy is how Baldwin must be feeling, knowing that, that he's the one that, uh, that, that was the cause of it. How much blame does he have? I mean, the facts will show, and so everything I can say right now about that is just speculation. Some people say he was horsing around with a gun, and you don't do that with guns. And especially Alec Baldwin on the set should know better. Other people say that's not what was going on. Again, this is all speculation, but I wanted to use this uh, as a chance to talk about firearm safety. And also a couple other uh, times this has happened in the movies. You probably heard about when it happened with The Crow. You know, the actor who fired the gun that killed Brandon Lee. It was not his fault at all. But again, you know, I, I can't imagine what he would go through, you know, being the instrument of that, even though it's not his fault. So, you know, my heart just goes out to all of that and to the family of the cinematographer and everyone who knew her and worked with her. So... I'm going to try to be very respectful for that, and I'm going to make it clear, you know, when I'm speculating and, you know, what we know and what we don't know. We don't know a lot, at least I don't know a lot right now. Um, so we'll see what happens. But I did want to go through uh, this link that was done by Warner Brothers. They have this website called safetyontheset.com, and this is a great resource for filmmakers if you want to know. These are all the standards and practices in the industry for how to do things safely. So they have a page on firearms. And I mean, it's going to be basically the same kind of thing we've talked about, except a lot of it is also going to be about specifically what happens on the studio. But rule one, as always, is treat all firearms as though they are loaded. All firearms are loaded, even if you cleared it yourself. So... One of the reports, again, this is speculation, is that uh, someone handed Baldwin the gun and told him it was a cold gun, that it wasn't loaded. Okay, and so the the speculation then, the, the reports uh, have him say, oh, ho, 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 there's just been so many takes, I'm going to bang your dad, bang your dad, um, with the unloaded gun, and it ended up being loaded. Because even if you're told, a gun is unloaded, you should still treat it as if it's loaded. Never muzzle anything you don't want to hit. Never put your finger on the trigger until you're ready to destroy whatever the gun is pointed at. And always be sure of your target and everything in and around it. And number two, do not engage in horseplay with any uh, firearms or weapons. This is what happened. I remember this back in like the early 80s. Um, John Eric Hexham. I don't even think he was even 30 years old. But he was this big up-and-coming star, and everyone was expecting great things for him. And um, So there was like this big long shooting day. I forget what it was for, but uh, the, there's a myth going around that he was playing Russian roulette. That's a myth. He wasn't, but what happened? It was just this grueling day, and it was like they'd done like 20-some-odd takes, and the director called for another take, and everyone was kind of groaning. And he just kind of joking picked up the gun and said, I can't take it anymore pointed at his temple, pulled the trigger. Now the thing about blanks is they can still do a lot of damage. That's a real concussive force. Even if you're like just 15 or 20 feet away, that force can do some damage. 
But in this case, point blank like that, the wadding actually fractured his skull and did life-ending brain damage. So, yeah, do not play around with firearms. They are not toys. Even if they're not loaded, even if they're only loaded with blanks, blanks can... I mean, they tell you this when uh, you fire revolvers because the chamber's kind of open. If you fire a revolver, if you'll, you'll see a lot of times the flash go out the side around the cylinder. They tell you when you hold the revolver not to put your hands there because just the escaping gas around that area can do some major damage. So, Never point a firearm at anyone, including yourself, and if called upon to do so, consult the property master. So one of the speculations is that this was a rehearsal and Baldwin was supposed to be firing towards the camera and he did and it, it went wrong. So you're going to see a lot here about the property master. It's basically the property master's fault. You know, there, there might be a question uh, because if Baldwin was horse playing, then of course he has a lot of the blame as well. But most of this is going to come down to the prop master. You know, why did he allow this to happen? Because it's really sounding at this point like there was a live round in the gun. Because they're talking about a projectile. You know, I mean, that might have been the wadding from the blank, but doesn't really sound like it at this point. Again, just speculation, but it sounds like there might have been a live round in the gun. How did that happen? Well, that is the responsibility of the property master. So. Whenever possible, simulated or dummy weapons should be utilized. Of course, if something is actually going to fire, you're uh, going to want it to fire properly. But if you're not firing, then it shouldn't be an actual weapon. It should be a hunk of metal or plastic that's in the shape of the gun it's supposed to be. And then you swap that out for the gun when you actually shoot the scene where it needs to fire. So, Number five, this goes to what I was just saying. Live ammunition is not to be brought onto a studio lot stage or location. Ever. End of statement. No live rounds. Ever. So, you know, how did that happen? When, when you talk about when Brandon Lee was killed, what had happened was they didn't actually have live rounds, but they tried making their own dummy rounds, which you really shouldn't do. And they thought, hey, if we just remove the powder, that'll be fine. We'll know the primer is still there. You have to remove the primer, too. And they didn't know that, so... They were shooting the character's death scene, Brandon Lee's character's death scene. And the actor, who was playing the guy who shot him, was using a revolver. When you shoot a revolver from the front, you can see down the cylinders and see whether or not it's loaded. So you need to see bullets in there. So they use dummies, which is just the casing and the bullet, and it's completely incapable of firing. Well, in this case, the primer was there. So when he fired the gun, it fired and the bullet lodged in the chamber. The primer was strong enough to push the bullet into the chamber. That was a really dangerous situation. A lot of things could have happened, including the gun exploding in his hand. So that's not a, that's not a, a good thing. But Brandon Lee wasn't in danger then because he wasn't there because his character wasn't in frame. But then they show, they shoot the scene from the other angle where he's actually you know, shooting uh, Brandon Lee's character with a blank. And th there's another one coming up too that, <laughs> that this will lead to as well. They still had that squib load in the barrel. They hadn't removed that when they put the, the blank round in. So, you know, the actor shoots, you know, towards Brandon Lee with the blank. The blank pushes that bullet the rest of the way out of the gun. Yeah, and then... Brandon Lee gets fatally wounded, so. Number six. All firearms brought onto a studio lot or taken on location shall be turned into that department which is responsible for and knowledgeable in the use of firearms. 
Privately owned weapons or gun belts which could contain ammunition are specifically subject to this requirement. This means that all firearms must be placed in the custody of that department designated by the studio for the responsibility of firearms. And this is a big one here. Unless actually filming or rehearsing, all firearms shall be secured by the property master. And this is one of those questions, did this happen? Because one of the uh, speculations is that Baldwin was horsing around between takes. Well, he shouldn't have had the gun between takes. Because, you know, you're standing there uh, getting ready to, to shoot and everything. And just before the director says action, the prop master hands you the gun. Director says action, you do the scene. Director says cut, prop master takes the gun. That's what's supposed to happen. So, they're only supposed to have it in rehearsals and when actually shooting the take, not at any other time. When a scene is completed, the firearm shall be unloaded. So, by the same token, you only have the blank rounds in the firearm when you're shooting the scene where the gun is to be fired. So. Number nine, instruction in the proper and safe use of firearms is the responsibility of the property master. Again, this is all going back to the prop master. The property master should be qualified with the use of the firearm, and if not familiar with the type being used, should consult an expert. The prop master shall not issue a firearm without first determining that the person who will use that firearm is knowledgeable in its use. So, a lot of people are saying, well, you know, Baldwin should have known how to handle a firearm. And they're right, he should have. But it was also the responsibility of the property master to make sure that he was knowledgeable, that he knew the rules of gun safety, that he knew what he was doing. So... Number 10, I think, is a good one. No person is to be coaxed, coerced, or otherwise forced into handling a firearm. Yeah, I mean, if you don't want to use a firearm, you, you shouldn't be required to use a firearm if you don't want to. Before using any firearm, make sure you fully understand the operating features and safety devices on the firearm and the precautions to be taken. Make sure firearms and weapons are checked before each usage and that they are cleaned, checked, and inventoried at the close of each day's shooting. So. Yeah, I mean, if someone had just checked that firearm before handing it to Baldwin, and if it was a live round, and they saw it, they were like, well, wait a minute, what's this live round doing in here? So. 12. Loading of firearms shall be done only by the property master or by the experienced persons working under his or her direct supervision and control. Such loaning shall only be done just before the firearms are to be used in a scene. So adding on to what I was saying earlier, you know, you hand them to the actor just before the director says action. Well, just before that, all right, we've got to fire a blank in this scene. Prop master standing there with the gun. When everything's ready and they're setting everything up, right before everything happens, the prop master takes the blank, visually inspects it, makes sure it's a blank, loads it in the gun, hands it to the actor, director calls action. So. Hand loading or altering factory loaded blank ammunition shall be done only by licensed powdermen. Number 14 is what wasn't done on the set of the crow. Never discharge a firearm when the barrel has become clogged with dirt or foreign material. Or a squib load. You don't want any barrel obstruction when you fire a blank. That, that's a bad thing. 15. Do not lay down a firearm in such a manner that dirt can clog the barrel or the working parts can be damaged. 16. On all loaded weapons equipped with a safety, the safety should be used in the safest proper manner consistent with the design of the firearm, its stage of readiness to fire, and its intended use. Seventeen. When a weapon jams or malfunctions, correction shall be made only by a person experienced to work on firearms. Again, this was not done in The Crow. The people who turned those live rounds into dummies did not know enough to remove the primer. And that that should have happened. Um, when the the malfunction happened, when you actually had that pop and bang of the primer, and people were going, what's going on? 
they should have had uh, an experienced person, preferably a gunsmith there, to say, whoa, wait a minute, that's a squib load. We need to clear this barrel before using the firearm again. 18. Do not attempt to adjust, modify, or repair a firearm. That should only be done by a qualified gunsmith. 19. The property master. Back to him again. And and I don't know who was the property master uh, on Rust. That uh, apparently is not on IMDb. But yeah, that the property master, I think, is going to have a lot to answer for in this. The property master shall determine the lightest and safest blank ammunition loads possible, consistent with the need and all personnel and the director shall be informed. So, the reason why they use blanks, it's not because of the sound. The sound is added on later. Directors love that muzzle flash. They like a nice, big, bright muzzle flash. And you can say, well, the muzzle flash can be added on in post. Well, yeah, it can. That was one of the things I had to do for Forever Yours, uh, was add a muzzle flash onto a, a gun that was fired. But the thing is, it's not just about putting on that flash. It's about lining up everything that flash would light up. And in my case, it was fairly easy because she was outside. So it would have lit up her and then not anything else. And it was just one muzzle flash. But I mean, if you've got, you know, a bunch of them to do, that can be a lot of post work. So you want a good muzzle flash on the scene to light everything else up the way it's going to be, and all the reflections of everything else. And then, you know, if it's not a big enough muzzle flash, you know, in post, your effects crew can always make the muzzle flash bigger, but you still want everything lit the way it should be lit. And if you haven't done that, then basically, if there's a lot of stuff around and a lot of things reflecting, the only way to really make a realistic muzzle flash is to recreate the scene in 3D. And, yeah, that that's a lot. That's a lot. So need to figure out what those requirements are for the muzzle flash and then only use blank ammunition that's strong enough to make the required flash. So. 20. Utilize camera personnel shields whenever the camera personnel are to, are to get a point blank shot. And this is another speculation. Well, one of the, the reports says that this was actually a rehearsal and he was called to fire the gun towards the camera where the DP and the director were. Well, there should have been a shield there. Why wasn't there a shield? Apparently there wasn't. Well, again, all speculation now. But if you actually have a projectile going straight to them, especially if the spec the, there's speculation that it was just one shot, um, it hit the DP, overpenetrated, exited her, and then hit the director. If it's strong enough to do that, it doesn't sound like it made it through any kind of blast shield. So, I mean, there's a lot we, we don't know. Um, I think it's even still speculation about what kind of gun it was. It, it takes place in the 1880s. So the speculation is that it's a Colt 45. Um, and I mean, that's a pretty powerful round, but I still don't see it doing all that damage after going through a shield. But. We'll get the, the real details, you know, when, when they all stabilize and when, when we get a better picture of what's going on. But yeah, there should have been a protected shield in front of them. Whether it's a rehearsal or you're actually shooting, whenever the, the actor has an actual gun that's going to be, that's going to be doing that, even if it's just loaded with blanks. Cause again, blanks can do damage even at a distance. So. 22. Never store live and blank ammunition in the same box. That's just good tip in general. You know, you want to make sure when you're getting something out of the box, are you getting a blank or are you getting a live round? So one of the speculation back when Brandon Lee was killed, one of the initial speculations was that that was what was happened. You had a box of blank ammo and there was a live round in there. Turns out that's not what happened. But um, yeah, you definitely want to do that. 23, the property master shall be knowledgeable and adhere to all manufacturer's warnings, expiration dates, storage, and handling procedures of all blank ammunition. And 24, prior to shooting blanks on an exterior set, the production company shall fill out an exterior shot checklist obtained from, etc., etc. So, this is really good. If you follow 
all these safety protocols, this kind of thing shouldn't happen. And indeed, this is only... A, think about how many movies have had actors firing guns all over the place. You know, shooting blank rounds in every direction, all sorts of people being shot, all of the movies and TV shows that have been done over the last century. This sort of thing has only happened a handful of times. There's the few times I mentioned... There was one time back in, like, 1915 with the Cecil B. DeMille movie when that happened. There were a couple of people who were injured by blank rounds on the set of The General. There was an extra where I don't even think he was in the line of fire. He was just close enough to kind of get the shock wave. And then Buster Keaton himself was injured when um, a cannon loaded with a blank went off and he was a little too close with it. So... Injuries have kind of happened a few times. You know, deaths have happened a few, but when you consider, you know, we're just talking about a handful of times here. Out of all the times they've used guns on set, this is a real culture of safety that works. I mean, you are just so safe on a film set. This is the sort of thing that should not happen. And. Again, I don't really want to say specifically who or what or why or anything else until I have all the facts, but really, heads should roll for this. I really think the, the prop master definitely has a lot to answer, answer for, and also possibly Alec Baldwin. You know, a lot of people are already jumping in to blame Alec Baldwin. It's like, well, we don't really know. If he was horsing around with the gun, like the initial report said, then yeah, yeah, he has a lot of the blame. But then so does the prop master. But, you know, you should not be horsing around with guns one way or the other. And also one way or the other, the prop master is ultimately responsible. So we'll uh, get all the details when that comes out. But I just wanted to go over this just to show you how it is that they handle guns safely on a film set and how they have such a wonderful track record at keeping everyone safe and really Something like this only happens when there's some pretty gross negligence on somebody's part. So whose part that is, time will tell. But thank you so much for watching. Comments for the common God, shares for the chair throne. Hit like, subscribe, and the bell. Please go to donate.bogosity.tv uh, to keep this uh, channel going. Keep me doing what I do. Keep me giving you all this good information. If you like uh, what I do and you think it's all interesting, please keep me going. You can keep me going regularly at Patreon or Subscribestar. Get these videos early and without. And he adds, I, I do kind of feel like I kind of need to apologize to the, um, to, to, to I think because I, I say, I'm going to give you these videos without ads. I do it on Daily Motion. I am not monetized on Daily Motion. And yet I'm getting reports that they're still getting ads, even though I've turned off monetization. That shouldn't be happening. So I might have to find a, find, find a different way of getting uh, unlisted videos out there. And it's just, uh, yeah. Yeah, fun times, fun times. But uh, thank you so very much. Until next time, stay strong and be free.